I declared a list within the curly brackets. Every single item is separated by a comma. I can have as many as I'd like, and that's nothing but a list. And we have literally replaced this list, which was a hard-coded list, with the dynamic list that we created. Okay. I gave Oz a proposition, and I said, yes. Oz, hey, why don't you just give me like 30 minutes of your time, and I'm going to help you understand the power of M language, especially lists. Like uh, that was well, a thing. List. That we I'm aware of M, and I've done some small modifications with M, but it's really lists that I'm curious about. All right, everybody. Welcome, Oz. Such a pleasure to have you. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Good to, good to see you again. Good to be doing this with you. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's been a while since London where we had a good time. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. What time is it uh, of the day at uh, your place? It is 9.07 p.m. Do you sleep by that time or I'm kind of keeping you up? <laughs> oh, man, no. <laughs> I go to bed about 2 a.m. So I'm oh, okay. Uh, night owl, is it? Yes, exactly, exactly, and that's why um, that's one good thing about the move to Las Vegas is it suits my night owl lifestyle. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Yeah. What would one find you doing, let's say, at one o'clock in the night? Well, there is a cigar bar that's on the strip that I like, and there's some really cool people. Uh, some regulars that I like hanging out with. And then I always meet fascinating people who are in town for conferences or something. So that's one thing. And they don't close until two. So at one o'clock, yeah, I could be there. Uh, I could be out just driving around, looking, exploring the city. I like to do that uh, just to get out of the house. I love nice. driving, man. I was gone for about three weeks uh, for the MVP summit, yeah. but most of it was me driving and exploring uh, or Twilight Zone. I like that show. And that comes on at 1230 and goes off at one. Uh, nice. So, you know, so that there, there, there are things. Oh, and there is a really nice 24 hour martini bar about two miles from where I live. I see. And yeah, but it's it's a good place because um, usually in other cities, places that are open at two o'clock in the morning, they're kind of run down and trouble. But this place is really nice, uh, really nice food, really nice cocktails. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, we just got a conversation started, but uh, I definitely would want you to introduce yourself as to uh, who you are, what is the work that you do. You obviously have a big label of Excel MVP for the very few people out there who might not know you, and that's a shame. But you want to you wanna maybe say two lines about yourself as to who you are and what you do? Um, Oz Dussolet, I'm from Chicago, but I live in Las Vegas. And I have the YouTube channel Excel on Fire. I what haven't posted it in a while, but I, I'm not done. I haven't quit. And I am a LinkedIn learning instructor. I've got a bunch of courses on that platform. And every Friday, an Excel challenge comes out. And then every other Monday, uh, uh, our power users challenge comes out. And they're all real world. And they introduce you to the new features of Excel. A lot of people like them. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, I collect kaleidoscopes. This is my newest kaleidoscope Damn. from uh, Mikio out of Japan. Yeah, that arrived. Um, I got that a couple weeks ago. So I got to know about kaleidoscopes when I saw your videos and you mentioned them on the videos. Um, until that before, I've never heard of that word. So if there are any people out there, what does a kaleidoscope do? Like, what, what is it about? A kaleidoscope is some type of an object that has a mirror system inside and then an object cell on the end. And a lot of times they, they could be plastic. There could be a glass inside. I've got one kaleidoscope that has feathers inside. And so you look through it and you can either turn the end and some you have to turn the whole thing and it just makes beautiful images awesome awesome just to give everybody a backstory yes i have never met oz i mean i've only seen you um like a fanboy on the internet on uh, youtube wow. uh, back in the day when i started working with excel and 
I still remember that you were coming uh, to the London Excel Summit uh, this time. And uh, I saw your name and I was very excited to kind of meet you. And it was night when I arrived at the hotel. And as soon as I got inside the hotel, you were standing right there. Uh, I believe you were the first one to recognize me. And say, oh. you said, uh, hey, Chandeep, welcome. And, you know, and the greetings and stuff like that. And we hugged. And I was thinking, oh, my God, I just hugged Oz Dusale. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> wow. Man. <laughs> you know, and and <laughs> I feel the same way. I, you know, because I've been a Chandeep fan. So this is this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, to, to see you on different, um, different meetups and stuff. And to, to see your work and say, my gosh, this guy is smart. <laughs> You know, but but you know, but the thing is, you, you can be really quiet though. It's like, <laughs> what, what, what's this Chandeep guy? You know, and so and so it was. I was looking forward to meeting you to to find out, you know, who you are to meet you and absolutely. yeah, it, and it was a great time in London. Absolutely, absolutely. While parting ways in London, Oz and I were speaking in the hotel lobby, and we just yeah. got to speak about Power Query for the first time in the entire Excel Summit. And um, Oz said that, hey, I love using Power Query, but I'm mostly the user interface guy. I've never really worked with the M language before. Uh, although I can make things work, but then I don't understand the utility of lists and you know all the you know things behind the M language. So I gave Oz a proposition and I said, yes. Oz, hey, why don't you just give me like 30 minutes of your time and I'm gonna help you understand the power of M language especially lists like uh, that was well, a thing that's right <laughs> yeah so, yeah because so one thing one thing that i will i will say is that i have written a lot of code in the past i don't like writing code <laughs> so i'm aware of m and i've done some small modifications with m but it's really lists that i'm curious about Sure. Um, sure. Because I've followed instructions online and I've gotten things to work and part of the instructions say you got to do a list and then you got to do all this other stuff. OK, so I'm following the instructions. I don't care so much about the M. It's like, why did I have to do a list? What does a list do? You know, when are they necessary? And, you know, those kind of they, they're a mystery to me. Sure, sure. And then um, I got back home and I was thinking about uh, doing a video. And then I thought, hey, I'm going to do that with Oz, but it's going to be interesting to record all of that in a video and just maybe yeah. post it out for anybody who's interested to watch. So that'll be nice to have. Yeah. Cool. So here we are. Absolutely. We are. Absolutely. Yes. Shall we? Shall we start? All right. Oh, awesome. So I'm going to yeah. share. Like, like James Brown would say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. I can see it. All right. Let's start with a blank query. So I'm gonna go over to the data, get data from other sources and a blank query. And I'll pull up that window right here. Now the first things first was is that if I have to talk about a list, list is just another type of a value, but think of that as an object in Power Query. So you have like a table, you have a number, you have a text. Similarly, you have something like a list. Okay. Now, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in the formula bar and start to create a list. Now, the list creation is going to be always within a curly bracket. So I'm going to start a curly bracket and end a curly bracket and within which I can create a list. And list can technically have anything within it. So let's just say that I write five numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. And that is a list. Now, notice that you're going to see that all the numbers are separated by a comma. So all the list items are going to be separated by a comma. So I've got five items in here, five numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And that is nothing but my list. I declared a list within the curly brackets. Every single item is separated by a comma. I can have as many as I'd like. And that's nothing but a list. Once I commit to it, um, I have a space at the start. Once I commit to it, you're going to see that I have a list. That's what a list looks like. Okay. You're also going to see that the query that I just created doesn't really look like the typical query that you have in Power Query. You would have a table icon instead here, but here you have a list icon. It tells you that the query that you've created is nothing but a list. Good to go so far? Yep. As of now, I fed the numbers in a list. Well, I could also feed in a text in a list. And obviously you would understand that any text is going to be in the inverted commas. And now one of the items is 
a text number. That is the simplest way of creating a list. Yeah, you start the curly brackets, you feed in the items one by one by one, sep each, of, each one of them separated by a comma. You can have text, you can have numbers. I'm going to also show you more complicated examples of a list, but for now, this is nothing but a list. I'll follow. All right, All right. cool. Sometimes, not sometimes, but actually most of the times, you're not going to be creating lists manually. You're going to be using your data manipulation or your tables or your data sets, the dirty data sets, to be able to do something in that data and that requires a list. So I'm going to go ahead and start to do something. So I'm going to go in the Home tab and I will enter some data to create a table of it. And let's just enter some data. So I'm just going to say that the first column is, let's say, a letter. And the second column is nothing but a value. So I'm just going to say value. And I will just maybe write three letters, A, B, and C. And then against that, I will write one, two, and three, three values of it. I'm going to call this as, let's say, some data. Click on OK. And that is my table created. So that's my table. Change type step has been applied. That's OK. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is that at the moment, if you have a table from this table, can we extract something as a list? So we have two columns. We have the letter column and we have the value column. At the moment, it's a, it's a table. So if you take a look at the icon here, it's a table. It's not a list. And the icon also shows right here. But can we extract a list from this table? The simple syntax to doing that is nothing but you write the table reference, table reference, and then you will write the column reference. This is the syntax. So you write the name of the table or the reference of the table first. In the square brackets, you're going to reference the column name, and then what you get is a list. So for example, change type is nothing but my table, which is right here. You can see that. And if I were to mention change type and square bracket, if I were to mention the name of the column, could be the value column or the letter column, I would be able to extract that column in the form of a list. At the moment, this is just theory. Nothing valuable is coming out of it, but we will get to that in just a bit. So if I were to just go, go ahead and create another step right here, you can see that it refers back to the previous step automatically. And that's a change type step. You've done that a lot of times in the past. And here I will initiate the square bracket. In the square bracket, I can put in the value column or the letter column. So let's just say value and reference of the table, reference of the column, and I press enter and what I get is a list, which is nothing but the same three values, one, two, three, but now in the next step, they are converted in the form of a list and that's a list. And it's different from if you had just deleted that other column and then you'd wind up, you'd still have a query, but you'd have a query with one column. That's right, that's right. Okay. The thing about list is that a list is never going to have a header. It's always going to be labeled as a list. You just oh. have a like list and then the values of the list. And the other thing about the list is that the list cannot be multi-columnar. That means if you were to ask me, hey, could you probably get both the columns as a list? I cannot. The list is only going to have one column, not more than one column. Uh, right? No headers, just one column, as many values as you would want. That's a list. So right, far, I'm, what we I'm have done. I'm taking notes here. OK. Oh, thank you. <laughs> OK, so for now, what we have learned is how do you make a list in case you would want to make one? And the syntax for that is the curly braces, and you can have as many items as you would want separated by a comma. Simple enough. And then I've also seen where you can do like a one dot dot That's right. 700. That's and right. then, okay. So if I were to just go ahead and make another step, so FX right here, and I can say something like, hey, I want to I wanna make another list. So I can say one dot dot 10. So the dot dot is like the expanding feature of the list creation feature. It says, hey, start from here and go up till here. And what you would get is nothing but a list of 10 numbers. You don't have to type out every single number. But funny enough, you can also do that with alphabets. So if I were to just go ahead and say A dot dot J, and you can, you're going to get the letters as well. So I don't think that you can't, you, you can do Monday dot dot Sunday or something like that, because that's not recognized by the unique character of the keyboard characters. But anything which has fed into the keyboard and is in a chronological order, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the alphabet starts with 65 as a character, go up till 96 or 97. All of those things can be generated through a list. Cool. So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to maybe duplicate this particular uh, query right here and do something more. So I'm just going to go ahead and do something slightly valuable you would still not be able to connect the dots, but in just a bit. I again have a table. The table has got two columns, the letter column and the value column. 
We obviously know that if I were to reference the table and after the table, if I were to put the square bracket and reference the name of the column, I will get the column as a list. But not every single time you would want to have the value. Sometimes, sometimes you want to want to pull the headers. So I want to pull the headers out. Like I want to have the letter and the value extracted as a list. Whoa. The column okay. headers. The column okay. headers. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I can make a step and there are several functions, M functions available in Power Query that are going to be able to do more nuanced operation that deliver you a list. For example, if I were to just make a new step that you can see it right here, which is custom one, I made a new step in the formula bar is currently empty, but I'm going to write a function here, like a formula here. And the formula will give me these two values in the form of a list. So let's just say that I'm going to write something like table dot column names. Then you can see that uh, it is asking me, hey, the table dot column names function is asking, hey, which table are you trying to refer to? So the table that I'm trying to refer to is nothing but the previous step, which is right here. And mm -hmm. that is the table that I would want to refer to. So I'm just going to say change type is the table, which is the previous step. Now, as soon as I commit to this function, you're going to see that it also gives me a hint. It says that once you commit on this form formula, you're going to get the column names as a list. Mm -hmm. So as soon as right. I commit to this, the previous table, all the column headers you have now received in the form of a list. So right. if you take a look in the previous step, we had two column names. We had the letter column and the value column. These two columns are pulled out and they are in the form of a list, letter and value. At this moment, everything I believe is looking theoretical to you and you're probably not able to send, okay, so what? Like, what are you trying to get at? Right, yeah, yeah, okay. Huh. We're getting okay. there. Now, let's just solve a practical question, okay? Okay. All right, so Oz, at the moment, if you can see that, I have two tables here. This is my table one, this is my table number two, and I can obviously go ahead and combine the tables in Power Query, right? Yep. So I, if I just maybe show you that table is called table two and the first table is called table one, I'm just gonna go over uh, to this particular table right here, click on data, and I'm gonna say, hey, from table range, and the table is down there in the Power Query window, right? That's the table that we're working with. Yes. Now, let's say, for example, I want to append the two tables. First table plus second table, I want to append it together. Like A, B, C, and then D, E, F, and then the first three numbers and the second three numbers, this should become like one table, which is very, very easy to do. So, append, um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm going to start to use a bit a bit of M here, but nothing that you you can't you, you can't you cannot understand so i'm going to get rid of the change type step right here and at the moment if you take a look at my source formula it's referring to table 1 which is the first table right here it's referring to this table but i want this formula this formula to refer to both the tables so table 1 and table 2 i don't want the table 1 to be hard coded here uh oh okay right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of this part of the formula like i'm just saying hey go to the current workbook and get many, get as many tables as you would have. That's what essentially I'm trying to do. Uh, I press enter and you can see that this table one, which was initially hard coded is right now here. And I can see the preview of the table. So if I just maybe bring that up, I can take a look at the preview of the table. That's your first table on the left. You see that that's the first table yeah. and that's the preview. And that's the second table, which is behind the window at the moment. Oh my. So far so good. Okay. All right. I didn't know about doing this. So if we had nine tables in this workbook, we yeah, could get them right here like this. That's right. Okay. Okay. So here is where the magic begins. Now, I'm not surprised, Oz, that you would not know of this technique, that if you want to expand the tables, you're going to obviously click on the expand yeah. button. So you expand the tables. So what you're going to get is the two columns that are within the table, but you'll also get the name column, which is the name of the table, which is fine. Unless you don't want that column. Right. Yes, unless so if I don't want that column, I can get rid of that. I can press the delete here and I can get rid of that. But let's say I want that column along. So let's just click on the expand button that everybody knows about. So I can click on the expand button. I can uncheck the name prefix. It gives me, hey, the two columns that are within the table are letter and the value and they're checked right now. If there are any more columns, I can click on load more, obviously. And then I'm going to click on OK. Very standard exercise for anybody who has worked with Power Query before. Right. So let me just do that. So I click on expand, click on OK and the columns are expanded. They are. Tables are combined. So this is my first table. 
and that is my second table the tables are combined appended good to go mm. yeah yeah <laughs> yes now there is just one tiny problem let's just say that i were to just go ahead in the home tab and i were to say hey i want to close and load the data so i want to say close and load to and i would like to load the table uh, right here next to this page so i'll just maybe load it right here click on okay and the table gets loaded and um, oh. i can just get rid of that one second uh, so i can say hey just remove the nulls so remove the empties home close and load well actually what's happening is that it's referencing the table once again so now we have three tables on the page so table 1 mm, table 2 and table 3 yes. okay wow that's fine but that's fine now if you take a look here if i were to add a column to this table so let's just say that i cut it and put it on the right a bit and i add another column so let's just say that i want to add a category column and i say hey the first one is a high category then you have a low category and then you have again a low category now ideally speaking this table table 1 should expand to have four columns now so one of the name column and then you should have a category column in between but it will not do that automatically so okay. i'm just going to go back to power query and just going to change the load behavior and not load it in in um, in excel so i'll say hey i only want to make a connection click on okay yes the table is off from here so we now only see the two tables the first table and the second table i'm going to go back in power query and if i now go ahead and take a look at my table even if i were to go to the home tab and click on refresh it is not going to get the additional category column in the table right. because okay. because if you were to go back and take a look in the source i take a look at the preview of the table you see that in the preview i can take a look at the category column which column does not exist in the second table that's totally okay but as soon as i expand the tables the category column disappears because mm. i were to i would now have to click on the gear icon yeah and then pull up the category column from here right. it's unchecked it's unchecked which is fine i mean checking the column is like no big deal but it's not dynamic right the table adds a column your query should update and your query should also update the column now let's go ahead and take a look at the code so up until the source step i was able to take a look at the two tables and i i made sure that there is a category column that i can see i believe the problem happened on this particular step which is where i stopped seeing that additional category column All right so if i just click on the on the step right here if i take a look at the formula bar the formula bar is something like this i'm going to copy this code and i'm going to maybe paste this code on the notepad and that is my code i'll just format the code just a little bit so that it's readable and i'll help you understand what that is so that's my code the code says table dot expand table column that's the formula used we don't really care about the function because power query ui is very intelligent enough to use the functions then it says hey what table are you trying to expand so we are trying to expand the table which was there in the previous step source that's the table that i'm trying to expand then yeah. it says hey what column are you trying to expand so we're trying to expand the content column and if you take a look at the source step you're going to see that the name of the column that we were trying to explain on which we clicked on the expand button the name of the column was content and right. that is the mention of that content column now if i were to just click right here if you remember these these are the two columns letter and the value that we clicked on here and then we clicked on expand and because we clicked on those two columns those columns are now hard coded now if you yeah. have a hard coded column name then obviously power query's m code will not put in a comma here automatically and write the name of the next column it would not know that so oz if you were to take a look at only this only this what does it seem like to you well it looks like a list absolutely it is a list we got two lists here we got two values but a single list here so that's the start of the curly bracket Well, that's well, the, I'm thinking about the, after the after that comma, we got right. two lists. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So that's the start of the curly bracket. That's the end of the curly bracket within which there yep. are two values, letter and the value, and then the yep. letter and the value appears one once again because that's the second list. Now let me first help you understand that why does it repeat? Like letter value, letter value. Why does it repeat? What purpose does it solve? So, um, the thing is that in this particular function, you're going to see that the first letter and the value are the columns that you are expanding on. which are the two columns which are right here letter and the value these are the columns that you are trying to expand the second mention of the two letter and the value is just in case after expansion would you like to rename them so i could say that hey i want to expand the letter but once you expand it i would like to call it my letter so now oh after expansion it is going to be called as 
my letter. Okay. But the funny thing is that this part of the formula, this part of the formula, the renaming part of the formula, this particular list is an optional and you can get rid of that. You don't need it. It's fine. So technically, we are actually looking at just a three part formula, which looks something like this. So you have the name of the table, which is right here. You have the name of the column and you have a list of the columns that you're trying to expand. That's it. Right. right? OK. Yeah. Now, the question is, at the moment, this is hard coded. Yeah. I don't want it hard coded. I want this to be handled by Power Query in such a way that it becomes dynamic and there is no hard coding. So it automatically picks up the next column in case that column has been added. That's that's what is going to technically solve the problem. Right. right? So having that in mind, having that in mind, I will go back to the previous step and essentially what I'm wanting to do is I would want to create a list and the list should have all the columns, all the possible columns separated by a comma in both of these tables, not just one, but both the tables. Right. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, combi I'll com combine the data of these two tables, table one and table two. I'll just combine it. Once I combine the data of the two tables, then I don't want the data. I just want the column names. That's my strategy to get the column names. So first combine the data without caring about what columns do you have. Once you've combined the data, then just give me the column names of it. Let's do that. I am going to right click on the content column and I'll say that I want to drill down. Okay. What this is going to do is this is going to pull this column apart from the source table, which is something that we've already done. So we said that, hey, if you write the table name and in the square bracket, if you write the name of the column, you're going to get a list. So this is also done by the user interface. So right click, drill down, and that converts mm -hmm. this into a list. And the list has two tables. The only thing is yeah. that Earlier, you had a column containing two tables. Now you have a list containing two tables. No big difference. But now I can use a formula table dot combine. So table dot combine says, do you have tables that you want to combine? So yes, I have the first table and then I have the second table that I would like to combine. But then it's also saying a very subtle aspect that the tables that you're trying to combine, you should give me those tables in the form of a list. So I made a list. And within that list, I have two tables and I just want to combine them. If I did not do this, it would not combine the tables because I have not made a list of tables. It's, it says that give me the tables, but those tables should be in the form of a list, right? So I close the bracket, I press enter and those two tables are combined. Yes. And we got the category. We did get the category column. Now, yeah. it does not concern Power Query when it's combining table, if the names of the columns are the same, it will append them one below the other. If the names of the columns are not the same, it will create a new column. Right. Right. Table dot combine. The thing is that this is exactly what we wanted. But the problem is that in the source step, we also had the name column that we wanted to keep, which has now been lost. We don't have the name column anymore. We, we want to expand it. We still want to expand it because if we expand it, then this column is going to be added along. So what I'm going to do is now that I have combined the data of the two tables, I'm not interested in the in the data at the moment. I'm just interested here in this. I'm going to go ahead and say something like table dot column names and start the bracket and close the bracket and table dot column names function is going to pick up this particular table and give me the names of the columns. So letter, value and category. But this time again, I'm going to get nothing but a list. By the way, this is a list. If you take a look at the formula, we wanted a list. This is a list. But then the only difference is that now the column names are not hard coded. They are being driven from a formula. And we now also have the additional category column present in our data. OK, OK. All right. Nice. So I'm going to relabel this as column names. This is my column names list. I can just rename the step and I can click on the FX to make a new step. And this particular step is now going to reference my source table, which is right here. So if I just kind of go ahead and say, hey, I want to reference the source table, click on enter. And I'm going to get now the two tables back on again, which I can now expand. So I'm going to click on the expand button Do exactly the things that I did it before. I even right. will uncheck the category column because I did not have it at the start. So I just had the right. letter and the value column. I click on OK. The tables do get expanded. I get the same code once again. Hey, I want to expand the custom one, which is the previous step. 
I want to expand the content column, the letter and the value hard coded and the letter and the value to be renamed. Same stuff, but only this time, if I happen to just delete this part, which is the renaming, I don't want it. But the letter and the value, which is the column that I was trying to expand, now I already have those columns, not hard coded, but created in the form of a list. Right. So I can just go ahead and delete that. And I yeah. can say, hey, just reference the column name list, close the bracket, press enter. You have the category oh. column now present automatically in the data. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and close and load the query. I will not load it back into Excel for uh, because that creates a duplication. But now this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name change the name of the column. And I'm going to say something like, hey, this became, let's say, a color. Not a category, but this became a color. And all of the products are red colored. And here, I'm going to add a category column. And then everything is, let's say, a high category. All right. Now, technically speaking, you have two columns which are common. So our resulting table should have two columns common. And then the color column should come in here. And the category yep. column should come in here. So now our resulting table should have four columns, right? Right. Let's, let's just go take a look. So if I just go back and take a look at the table back in there, you're going to see that the resulting table does have four columns. It has the letter column the value column, the color column, which was only for table one, and the category column, which was only for table number two, yes. automatically. How did it happen? If you go back to the source step, you can see that the preview does show me the color column here. The preview mm -hmm. does show me the category column here. Yeah. I then combine the data of these two tables in the next step. So this particular table.combine function is going to combine the data of the two tables. But I discard the data. I don't want the data. I just want the names of the columns. So I use the table.columns names function to extract only the names of the columns of for both the tables. So right. now you can see that this is now becoming dynamic. We added the color column. We added the category column. It was dynamic. And we have literally replaced this list, which was a hard coded list with the dynamic list that we created. OK, I'm following and I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> So now I see I'm seeing a relationship between the M code and the list. And because I haven't done much with the M code, I wasn't paying attention to, oh, OK, put this in a list and uh, this other thing in a list. I've, I'm very much aware of the hard coding problem. That's right. Excellent. So that was one. OK, I just want to maybe cover one more example because it will just be a bit too much to consume all of that in one go. Okay, So this is something very practical and you're going to have that coming up over and over again. I'm sure you must have faced that sometime in the past as well. So I open up another Excel that I've prepared for you, which is right here. If oh you take boy, a look, yes. this, this looks like exactly what I was thinking about. OK, let's go. Yes. So if you take a look at this data, this obviously is pivoted data. So you, if I have to read the number 20, I have to look up and I have to look on the left. Anytime you see cross tabulation in data, that's what I call it. It's, it's a pivoted data. It's cross tabulated. You can't understand 20 unless you take a look up and unless you take a look at on the left. Now, obviously, you can come in here. I mean, let's just load the data into Power Query. So control T for that. Click on OK. Yes, this is my table. And I'm going to say, hey, why don't you load the data into Power Query from table range? And that data goes inside of Power Query. So far, so good. Nothing that complicated. Now, the thing is that if I were to go ahead and right click on the product and say unpivot other columns, the problem is solved. I can relabel this column as month. I can relabel this column sure. as something and I can click on close and load the data. So let's just do that. So home tab, close and load, close and load to and I will load the data uh, existing worksheet on this particular cell, which is right here. Click on OK. And that is the data loaded. Mm. Right. Thing is that later, Somebody goes ahead and adds another attribute to the product. So let's just say they add a class to the product, right? So these are these are all my high class products and these are all my mid class products. Now, back in Power Query, you would have to go amend the step. Now you would have to right click on two columns and then say unpivot other columns because the first time right. when you did it, you right clicked on just one column and then said unpivot other columns. Because if you were now to just refresh this particular query, the class column is also going to be unpivoted. So right click and I'll say refresh. And you're going to see that the class column is also unpivoted, which is something that I don't want it. But right. How do we solve it? Let's take a look. So I'm just going to go back to my table and go to the source step. This is where 
I right clicked on the product column and I said unpivot other columns. That's what I did. Right. And that created the next step, which is this particular step. Right. Now, if you take a look at this particular step, let me just copy yeah. the column and paste that right here and also kind of format this a bit. Now, if you take a look at this piece of code right here, what this code is doing is that it's saying, hey, which table do you want to use for unpivoting? I want to use this particular, sorry, I want to use this particular table for unpivoting, which is nothing but my source. Mm -hmm. Then it says, did you click on a column and said unpivot other columns? Yes, I clicked on a column called the product column and I said unpivot oh, other columns. Oh my gosh, okay. Right. So the product column is hard coded here. And the other two standard columns that we always get are attribute and value. And those are attribute and that's the value. So the only change that I would like to make is that here now, manually, I would like to add another one called class and that will probably solve the problem. But the thing is that next time another column gets added, I'll have to come back to the code again and then revise my code once again. Right, right. Well, so, so, like, so like you got your product and then you got your class, and then maybe you add a, a vendor. That's right. Anything. Yeah. Anything. That's right. Now, again, what does this seem like to you? That is a list. That's a list. That is a list. So you have two items in the list at the moment, product and the class. But those two items are hard coded at the moment and we don't want them to be hard coded. So now right. if I just if I just go back to the source step, this time I want to be able to build a pattern, meaning anything which so obviously i want the names of the columns once i get the names of the columns anything which is not a date anything which is not a date so this is not a date and this is not a date then needs to go ahead and make the part of the formula so these two are not dates and these should be dynamically put in right here so i need to write some logic and the logic should check for what please do unpivot only the dates keep the non-dates capture them dynamically and put that right here. That's the logic that I'm trying to build. Let's just do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new step. So I click on the FX, click on insert, a new step gets inserted. In the new step, what I'm trying to first get, give me all the column names, no matter there are a date, there are a text, it doesn't matter. Just give me the names of the entire columns in this table. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to write a formula, table dot column names. Start the bracket, close the bracket. We've done that like two or three times now, and that should yep. seem okay. And this has resulted me in all the possible names of the columns in the previous step. All right, Oz, here is where it gets interesting and also slightly easier for you because you are the UI guy. The thing about lists is that as soon as Power Query realizes that you're working with a list in this particular step, it realizes that you're working with a list you're gonna see that if you could go over to the home tab, all the options that we typically work with are grayed out. Mm -hmm. You're also gonna see that here, there is no filter option to filter the list. Nothing, nothing. Because Power Query's UI was built to work with tables and not lists. So if you take a look at all of these tabs, everything is grayed out, everything is grayed out and so on and so forth. But that's okay. Because what we can do is now in this particular list tools, which only appears if you're working with a list, we can convert it back to a table. Table, yeah, yeah. Right. So I can just go ahead and say that, hey, this list that I have made, please put it back into a table. And I'm gonna insert a step in between, that's fine. And that becomes like, uh, uh, just show as errors, or maybe I just don't wanna have the extra columns, no delimiter, click on okay, and that becomes a table. Now, oh. if you go back to the home, home tab and stuff like that, you're gonna see that everything is back up again and you can work with the table. Now it's very easy for us to be able to see that, hey, which are the date columns and which are the non-date columns. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new column. So I'll make a new column right here, and then I'll try to convert one Jan into a date, one Feb into a date, so on and so forth. That's what I will do. So I'll just go ahead and make a new column. So add columns tab, create a custom column, insert a custom column, and I'm gonna write a formula. And the formula is nothing but date.from. So I wanna take the date from the column one. So I'll just feed column one, close the bracket, press on okay. And you can see that, hey, one Jan was converted into a date, no problem. One Feb was converted into a date, no problem, so on and so forth. Nothing that mm -hmm. complicated, but yeah. the product and the class actually gave me errors. That's what now, we want. That's exactly what we want. So on this table, what I can say is that, hey, why don't you keep the errors and delete the rest? Uh, I think that option is there at the home tab, uh, keep rows, keep the errors, uh, insert a step in between 
And that's exactly what we have, product in the class. The only problem was if you take a look at your formula, your formula wanted product in class, you have product in the class. The only problem, this is not a list, but this is a list. Put it back. So how do we how do we get this into a list like this? Easy yeah, enough. Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. She, you, well, I don't know. So I know that you can convert a column into a list. Exactly. So if I, don't, I were to I don't know if we gotta I don't know yeah. if we gotta delete the custom first. You don't need to delete the custom. Okay. Okay. All right. Delete All that I'm going to do is I'm going to say that in the next step, in the next step, I'm going to say kept errors, which was the previous step. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's my table name. I'll put up the square bracket and I'll mention the name of the column that I would want to extract as a list. So square bracket column one is going to give me a list. And that is the list that I would want. There you go. Now I can call this as un pivot column list. I can kind of rename the step. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go back to the function, the function has broken for good reasons because we added so many steps in between. So we gotta, we gotta fix that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, hey, if you take a look at this formula right here, table dot unpivot other columns was working on the source step, not on this step. So we need to change this to source because the source contained the table that you wanted to unpivot. And then we also, if you take a look at this, we wanted to have two inputs here, not just one, so product and the class. And these two inputs now are coming from this step that we have made. Mm -hmm. So I can cancel this out, the hard-coded entry, and I can say that here is where I will mention this particular unpivot columns. So unpivot column list, uh, attribute and value remains the same. So far so good, press okay. And we now have two columns as unpivoted. Right. Go home close and load the data, and that's your data. You can see that product and the class are now there. Pretty good. Now, if, yes. we, were, if, if we were to just go ahead, let's just say that, uh, got that, paste that right here. Now, if we were to just go ahead and say that, hey, this time I wanna add a vendor, and let's just say that um, the vendor is something like, hey, let's just split it. So you are the vendor for the first three, I'm the vendor for the next two. And now. Mm -hmm. Ideally speaking, Power Query should now select three columns automatically and then yeah. say unpivot other columns, right? So if I were to just take this table, uh, put it on the side here, not on the left, but put it on the side and then do a refresh. So right click. Oh, uh -oh okay. And do a refresh. You can see that now oh. it also has the vendor automatically show up as unpivot other columns in the list. Wow, okay. Okay. Whenever you're taking a look at the M code in the advanced editor, so this is the advanced editor, at any point in time, at any point in time, you see the curly brackets and you see values within that curly brackets. That is nothing, uh, that is nothing but a list. So this is a list. Again, this is a list. Right. So wow. essentially what you would want wow. to do is if you have the curly brackets and something in red, the less you have red, the less hard coding you have in your M code. Yeah. So reduce the red is one thing that I say it very, very often. Uh, and I'm writing this down. Okay. Okay. So. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you have any questions, happy to help. I was thinking because there's, there's that issue also of, of splitting columns. And I don't know, you have a column with delimiters and then you do split columns That's and right. then say it was five columns. Power Query will hard code that five. That's right. And then you add three more columns and it's stuck on the five. That's right. And you got to yeah. go do something to get it to recognize eight. So now is that a list issue? Yes, that's a list issue, but that's slightly more trickier than that. So let's just go explore okay. that as well. I would not start to write the code right here, but then I have a video on that. Maybe I can just put the link here in the description for everybody to see, but I'll just help you understand. So let's say- Because I've, I've done videos on this, so I, I have I have solved it, but if I used the list in the video, I didn't understand it. Uh, okay. Or I did some roundabout um, interface way of doing it. Okay. So cool. So let's just say that we have a column and the column has the letters. So I'm just going to say A comma B comma C. And then here you have A comma uh, B, A comma C. And I'm going to convert this into a table. Right now, 
sorry, I'm going to convert this into a table. My table has headers. Click on OK. Right now, the max that you're going to get is three columns. So first column for A, second column for B, second the third column for C. Right. But then if you come ahead and increase the number of columns, you just write D as well, then the query is not going to have D as a new column because that is stuck to what happened right. in the first time. I'll just help you understand it, like, and then not do that, but I'll just help you understand it. So I'm going to go ahead and load this data into Power Query. So yeah. click right here, data from table range, and that goes inside Power Query. Uh, delete the change type, right click, and I'll say split the columns by a delimiter. My delimiter happens to be a comma. Uh, at each occurrence, click on OK, and that is what you get. Uh, delete that as well. Now, if you take a look at this piece of code, in this piece of code, it says, hey, table.split, that's the function. Which table are you trying to split? So I'm trying to split the source table. Which column are you trying to split? So I'm trying to uh, split the column. So this particular column, it's called col. That's the column that I'm trying to split. Mm -hmm. Then it says, here's the formula, uh, split text by delimiter. My delimiter happens to be a comma. Once you split it, then I want you to make three columns, column one, dot one, uh, column dot two, and column dot three. These are hard coded, you see that? Yeah. Now, now, if you are somehow able to take this particular list and make it dynamic, we are done. The only trouble is that we need to go ahead, somehow count how many splits do we need through the commas, and then that count, like four commas or five commas or six commas, that count is then going to determine how many items that you're going to have in the list. That's how yeah. would you would solve it. But then I have a video on it, um, right. split columns by a delimiter, like make the columns dynamic and we just put the links down, but that's the logic of it. I'm following because it sounds like we got this hard coded call one, call two, call three. If it goes out to eight, we could create a list somewhere else that goes out to call dot eight. That's right. And plug it in here. That's right. Yeah. So you can have multiple and, steps here. Yeah. Uh, that will define the logic as to how many columns do you would want. And eventually what you're going to have is a list and that list yep. will have as many columns displayed dynamically and that list will then become a part of this formula. Yes. Oh my. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. When we saw the red, when we looked at the code and could see the curly braces and now I can identify lists. That's right. From other things. Right. That's right. That's right. And I like the way you built up to just show the technical stuff. And then we got into, uh, in one way, you know, creating variables. We're dealing with the, the hard coding. This particular query that we have created just a while ago, this particular yeah. query, which is where we were trying to do unpivoting of the first two columns or three columns and leave the, leave out the rest. And we did so many steps, all of these steps to only get to this particular list. If you were mm -hmm. to know M code, like, like right from scratch, you can literally omit all of these steps and just have it within the unpivot step only. Like everything you can just code it through. But then I was just trying to make it easy just to kind of yeah. help. Yeah. So you have a list, you cannot work with a list in the user interface. So what do you do? You go to the transform, make it as a table. So once you make it as a table, the, the Power Query UI lights up and you can now do anything that you would otherwise do with the data. And I'm just trying to do is that, hey, I'm just trying to find out that where do you get an error? So here is where you get an error and we keep the errors and then we convert this back. Mm -hmm. It's a table at the moment. We don't want a table, yeah. we want a list. We convert this back into a list and then we plug yeah. this particular list into the formula, which is right here. And I love those tricks where you get some things to error out that's so right. that you can either keep the errors or keep the non errors. But that's right. yeah, that's a way of, of parsing data really slick, um, but yeah. And I did not know that the, the, you know, when we saw originally the two things and you did the my list, I did not know that that was just the renaming. I thought yeah, it was because we had two tables that had the same columns, but then, okay, so that made sense to me. So whenever you're trying to expand, uh, where was it? Here, expand. So in the expansion step, uh, right now we have converted that into a list, but then if you put a comma and have another list, the second list is going to rename the columns. Mm -hmm. So, yep. well, you could also have the second list as dynamic for all that matters. Like expand, but while expanding, just also rename the columns. So you kind of save another steps. 
Wow. I, I got you. I got you. I, I'm sure I've exceeded the, the threshold that we had for 30 minutes, but I hope you were able to get some value out of it. Uh, the list yes. especially. Reduce the fear a bit, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. I, I follow. I follow. Because you did a drill down. I'm familiar with using drill down to create variables. Yeah, yeah. You create a variable that way, passing a parameter. Uh, so I followed all of the pieces. You helped me to connect the dots and understand the place of a list. Sure. And now I'm just got to go back and think about some of the ways where I just blindly followed instructions and created lists and kept moving. Now I have a fuller context as to what's going on. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Are you are you still going to sleep at two o'clock tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> Man, but uh, I appreciate this a lot, a lot. This opened up so much more for me to go back and look. But yeah, they aren't so mysterious now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would not de deny that once a Power Query user interface guy takes a look at the M code, be it in the formula bar or in the advanced editor, it looks so goddamn scary. I would not deny that. <laughs> Like, yes. what are all these characters? Why are there like four different types of bracket? And why there is a hash sign and all of all of that. But it's fascinating what you can do with the M language where the user interface can just stops or it becomes relatively very hard to do it with the user interface. And what could you do with the M language? Because Microsoft has built this UI and the UI is absolutely phenomenal to get you to 80, 90, 95% of what you want to do and automate that. But every once mm -hmm. in a while, you're going to have that roadblock where you want to do something, but it doesn't just work with the UI. You just need to go a little extra because yeah. the UI is going to hard code things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know, I have done this trick of uh, split into rows yeah. because that will expand. Yes, that's it. But then I've got to put it back later. That's and right. so I've got these long and multiple queries and they work. They work. That's right. Right. Um, so I am so grateful for the UI as it is. And I've I've not been stopped by it. Um, but I can see now a lot of things could be simplified Absolutely. by using the list and Absolutely. creating these variables this way. Yeah, list just happens to be one object type. So you have lists, then you have records, uh, then you have data types. Um, tables. Yeah, tables, of course. You have tables, and then you have custom functions on top of that, like this is and if you put together all of that and like recursiveness is another thing that is there like you have self referencing functions another thing that people often get very very scared about is the each and the underscore keyword uh, so you often okay. are going to take a look at the m code and it's, it's going to say each underscore at in the in the, in the formula bar i don't know if you've seen that or not not that it's coming to mind yeah, especially when you apply filters to a table you're going to see each underscore and then something like each something um, yeah. So that is where uh, people kind of get scared or something. Or especially if you create a new column. If you create a new column in Power Query, uh, I think we did create a couple of new columns, did we? Uh, sorry. Yeah, we did. So we got a list. We made the list into a table, and then we added a column, right? We added this custom column. Now, if you take a look, it shows you each. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, there is something called as iterations in Power Query that often confuse people a lot. So I'd agree the language is not very user friendly. It's not easy. But then once you get the hold of what you're doing and the objects and how do you work with different objects in Power Query, uh, it's a very, very fascinating language. It's a very fascinating language. I like this. Cool. I like it. Yeah. Well, thanks um, for this. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Oz. It's such a pleasure, such a pleasure that yes. we are able to do this. Uh, yes, and, you, and thanks for offering and, and keeping up because <laughs> um, we had this conversation more than a month ago. Yeah, And then I fair. went to the MVP summit and I went back to Portland for a few days and then I finally got back and we, we, we it we didn't did it. slip through the cracks. Yes, 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 yes.
Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for this. I really appreciate it. And I, I follow it and I'm going to have to play with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. You'll have the video out so you can maybe watch it again. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thanks Oz for making time. And I would love to have you sometime once again. Oh, yes. Let's make it happen. Thank you.